second. Okay, so today's topic is menu. Menu is relatively straightforward concept. So let's move on. Slide number three. So we'll talk about types of menus. Mainly we are talking about options menu and context menu. Uh, those are two different types of menus. And then we, we will talk about submenu concept. And uh, we then will talk about how to create a menu uh, from resource file rather than creating menu uh, in your Java program. So let's move on to the types of menus. So uh, two types of menus. Uh, actually, if you include some menu, uh, three different types of menus. Uh, context menu is is a floating list of menu items, and when you press a uh, long press on a particular view item, a uh, view component, uh, context menu pop up. It's a pop up menu. And options menu, on the other hand, is the menu that gets revealed on the bottom of the screen when you press menu key. And some menu is uh, the grouping menus. Uh, by the way, the submenu uh, is not supported in the uh, uh, submenu does not support nested submenu, meaning there is only one level of submenus. Okay, so let's move on to context menu. So context menu do not support uh, shortcuts and icons. So when you press a view item, view component, uh, for example, you are going to long press a button, then you are going to see context menu popping up like this. And, you, and when you press uh, an item, a menu item, then you can do whatever you want. So you can display activity page, or you can just display uh, a view component and uh, you can perform web services, whatever. So how do you create context menu? So basically, you are going to override on create context menu uh, method in your activity class. Okay. So that's all you have to do. Uh, so activity uh, class is, in fact, uh, the uh, implementing an interface that contains uh, this method on create context menu. And you can then populate uh, the menu uh, in two different schemes. Scheme one, uh, you can do uh, create menu items in programming mode, uh, just like in Swing, uh, or the better and uh, preferred method is by using menu resource. So, so far we have learned a uh, few resources type, few resource types, right? Uh, we learn, of course, string resource, and we learn about the uh, layout resource, and uh, we have seen some drawable resource. Now you are going to see uh, menu is another type of resource, so it has to be on the res directory. Okay, so let's talk about how we can create menu items uh, the, uh, the, uh, and populate menu uh, in programming mode. So pretty straightforward. Again, you are going to override on create context menu method in your activity class. And uh, this is a callback, so it will be called uh, by the Android platform and it will pass you the menu and the view and context menu information. So all you have to do basically is you can set the title and then you basically add menu items. Menu 1, menu 2, menu 3, and menu 4. So this is not that much different from uh, the uh, swing code. Now when a user select a menu item, uh, how can you handle it? So basically you are going to provide uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, event handler. Uh, so you are going to gain in uh, override uh, on context item selected callback method again in your activity class. 
So when a user select an item, this method will be invoked by the Android platform. Uh, so in this method, you can do anything you want. For example, uh, displaying some uh, activity page, screen page through an activity, uh, or you can invoke web services and things like that. Now you can get uh, which item has been uh, selected by the user by calling get item ID method. So it will return an ID. So that's basically ID that you specified on the second parameter. So this is an ID. Menu dot first, menu first dot plus one, two, three, and so among these four menu items, uh, the number that returns to you that is passed to you, uh, the uh, the uh, you can get uh, by calling. You can get that uh, menu item number by calling get item ID. Okay, so this is an example. Uh, again, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so you are going to override on context item selected method and you get the menu item uh, as a parameter and uh, you call get item ID method of an item and uh, then you can uh, see what ID it is and then you can do whatever you want based on that menu selection. So relatively straightforward. Okay, so that's context menu. Moving forward, options menu. So options menu is being displayed on the bottom of your screen. And again, options menu is displayed when you press uh, menu key on the device. And typically, you know, you uh, give a basic application functions in the form of option menu items. Okay, so this is a bit of repeat of what I just talked about a few seconds ago. So options menu is opened uh, when a user press a device menu key and uh, it basically display icon menu. Now display six menu items. Now if you have more than six items, uh, the last item will have more menu item. Uh, so in this case we have five items, but if you have more than six, uh, the uh, let's say seven or eight, one of them, actually the last one will say more, and if you press the more uh, item, uh, it will display the remaining uh, the options menu items. Okay, so in terms of uh, creating uh, the uh, uh, populating uh, the options menu and uh, event handler when item is selected is pretty much the same as in the case of context menu. So here uh, we have two different uh, piece of code. Uh, one is without the icons and the other one is with the icons. Okay. So here basically you are going to again call add method for the menu and uh, this is uh, menu ID numbers and if you want to include an icon uh, you basically call set icon with drawable uh, icon resource like this. So again pretty straightforward. So this is for populating menu with menu items. So how to handle menu selection again works exactly the same. So instead of on context item selected, you are going to say you are going to implement on options item selected. Uh, again, it's going to pass the menu item, so you can get the item number by calling get item ID uh, method. So work exactly the same. So this is example code. Again, it works exactly the same. In fact, the same code. So you, again, you call get item ID to get the uh, item ID, and then you do whatever you have to do. Okay, sub menu. 
So if you have uh, the multiple menu items and if some of them can be grouped together, then it's a good time to think about organizing them into a submenu. So again, this is not that much of Android thing, but uh, you know, for any uh, the uh, menu uh, creation in any uh, the UI, so this is a, a good thing to do. So here, suppose I am grouping uh, these four some menu items like a new open file and close and close all into file uh, submenu and then I'm grouping the rest of these three into edit okay so you are going to call add submenu and the submenu uh, name and then for those submenus you are adding items okay so that's relatively straightforward Okay, so far what you have seen is creating menu in programming mode. Uh, as I said before, it's better to create menu uh, using XML resource. So that's what we are going to learn. Oops. So instead of instantiating menu object in your application Java code, uh, you should define a menu and all these items in XML resource file. And then you are going to what is called inflate menu resource. So what do I mean by inflate menu resource? You are basically reading uh, menu XML file and load it as a programmable object. So you're basically creating a menu object. So as I said before, defining your menus in XML is better practice than creating them in code uh, because it separates your interface design from your application code. Uh, same reason that we have a separation of layout file from your Java code. So how do you create a menu resource file? So you're going to create menu resource file in the form of XML on the res menu directory. So you give a name like a main.xml um, you know, and then it resides on the res menu and it will be uh, inflated as menu resource object. And then you're going to use what is called the menu inflator class uh, by calling inflate method of uh, this class. And, uh, and then you provide menu resource ID. It's going to be dot, I'm sorry, all dot menu dot and uh, name of your menu resource. And then menu objects are created from the resource file. So instead of you creating yourself, it will be created by Android platform. Okay, so this is an example. So here, uh, we are creating menu object by inflating it. Again, by inflating, I mean loading XML uh, menu resource file and basically creating menu object. So you are going to get menu inflator uh, the uh, the uh, class by calling get menu inflator again this is a method from your uh, the activity class and then you're going to inflate by providing menu resource okay and uh, then uh, in your code uh, when you call get item ID uh, you can actually use uh, this ID number resource ID number so let's see the resource file. So this is example of the resource file that we just have used in our previous Java code. So you have menu element and then you have an item. So we have a two items here and this is an ID. So every resource has an ID, right? If that resource needs to be referenced in Java code or any other place, for example, uh, resource file, um, the uh, layout resource file, uh, the, uh, the, it has to have an ID. So we have an ID, and this is the way that you made the reference, jump and dive, and this is, uh, the, uh, this is how you made the reference here, okay, in your Java code. And the title and icon, so instead of again using set title method and set icon method, you can provide those in the form of attributes of item element. Okay, so I gave you a pretty 
high-level picture of uh, how menu gets created and uh, how menu gets populated and how uh, menu selection is being handled and we also talked about how we can uh, create menu from menu resource file okay any question we are going to cover uh, a lot more detail in the hands-on app okay so let's take a look at the hands-on lab so this hands-on lab is available uh, the uh, on the website uh, so you should be able to get it so we have a bunch of uh, menu uh, exercises so most of them are relatively straightforward so let's move on exercise one uh, again you can import all this in a single shot Okay, rather than the individual project if you select samples directory if you select samples directory uh, instead of this one then it will load all of them okay so let's say when you run this particular application context menu uh, you're going to see this okay so uh, let's see if I can run that application So here, context menu, if I run this application, how many of you have joined this webinar for the first time? I know many of you are repeat uh, attendees, but I assume some of you are attending this one first time. Okay. So if you are attending this one first time, I strongly recommend you to go through at least the uh, first uh, hands-on lab, which is uh, the uh, building Android application step by step. So you can get it. Again, you can get it from javapassion.com. So if you go to uh, javapassion.com and uh, you can get the uh, and without logging in you can go to uh, Android programming yeah looks like uh, there are a few people yeah so there are three uh, the presentations and hands-on labs you can get those without logging in so these are all available for free so uh, step by step and uh, last week we talked about layout and we are talking about menu so I strongly recommend you to download uh, this step-by-step -step and uh, it does give you very detailed step-by-step uh, -step, uh, instruction starting with installation and configuration so for those of you who are attending first time let me just show you the documentation yeah so that first session is recorded so you should be able to find the recording even though the uh, recording is not the best quality uh, you should be able to listen in uh, by downloading uh, from the uh, the website okay all right so let me just uh, go oops Okay, so let me just open the file. Okay, Android. And uh, today we are talking about UI menu. Okay. Yeah, for those of you who download the zip file, yeah, feel free to run these things. Okay, all right, so I think I have this one up. Uh, okay, uh, I didn't run it, I guess context menu I'm going to run it okay it's a starting activity okay Oh, looks like I'm having some issues. Okay, so let me just close this guy.
question from uh, Jork. Is it possible to program Scala on Android for having menu callbacks handled with Scala code? Uh, in theory, I don't see any reason why it cannot be done, uh, even though uh, I haven't done it myself. So I cannot say for sure. So Scala is Java, but uh, you know the uh, Java runtime in Android uh, might be a bit different from the uh, uh, runtime platform that you have on your desktop. So it uh, depends on the uh, how uh, the uh, Android Java platform is actually uh, working with uh, the uh, runtime platform that your Scala code works. Uh, it might actually have some issues. All right, so I'm going to just move ahead. I, I was going to just kind of run it and actually show it to you, but since we have all these pictures. Okay, so and if it runs, and you should see one of the view items. So here we have a button. Okay, so if you press long on this one, what you are going to see is this context menu. And uh, if I select one of these context menus, then in this application, it's going to just display a very simple toast message. Okay. All right, so let's see the code. So my context menu class extending activity, and I have a button object which I uh, the the which I can uh, reference by calling uh, the reference of which view object I get by calling view uh, find view by ID. So I got the button object, and then I'm going to call set on create context menu listener. So basically, I'm associating uh, the context menu listener, and then I'm going to implement these two. Okay. So the first one is for populating menu. So that's the thing. That's the uh, the uh, for populating menu, and this one is handling item selection. Okay. So again. Uh, we are just adding few items to the menu, and here uh, we we basically uh, display. This is a toast message, and uh, we get the item ID, and we basically says, you know, this is the item ID has been selected. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Okay, so you can see uh, context-sensitive uh, documentation of activity class, and the reason we are showing that one is because uh, you can see activity class implements view dot on create context menu listener. Okay, so in this listener interface, uh, we have those two methods uh, that you are actually implementing. So on create context menu method and also on context menu selected method. So those are two methods from that interface that activity class has implemented. So that's the reason uh, you can just have those two methods to be overwritten. Okay. Okay, so you can take a look at the uh, context menu uh, the uh, documentation. So you can see context menu is uh, the implementing menu interface. Okay, so moving forward. All right, so that's context menu. Options menu is a menu uh, that gets displayed when you press uh, menu key, as we talked about. So if you uh, run the options menu, uh, you are going to see this uh, display. So you press uh, menu key, and what you are going to see is this uh, menu items on the bottom of the screen. So this is an example that we have more than six uh, items. Okay, so you can see more uh, here when the user select one of these five items. Uh, in our case, again, we are just displaying toast message. Okay, so you select it menu items number two. A question from Sanjeev. Are the animated GIF files allowed for icon for menu items? Uh, that's a good question. I believe the answer is yes. I have text to check it out. That's a very good question. Okay, so moving forward. So the, again, the code is pretty much the same. 
So here we overwrite on create options menu method and on options item selected. Uh, we don't have text set any event listener because you know this is the case that uh, the uh, the way this one gets started is by pressing the menu key instead of uh, long pressing a particular view object. Okay. All right. Moving forward. Now this is in order. You can specify. Okay. So five, three, four, and one. So this is going to be in fact the first one. Okay. So you know this is. Uh, it's, uh, it's reshuffled based on that order. Okay, so that's options menu. Uh, now exercise three is uh, options menu with a sub menu. So here we have two uh, sub menus: file and edit. So when you click file, then here we are going to have context. Uh, the uh, menu uh, from the first uh, sub menu and again if you click one of this we are basically displaying you selected menu item number zero in this case okay so again the uh, the code is relatively straightforward so here we create sub menu and we just added items and uh, we created so we had this is a second sub menu uh, so relatively straightforward. Uh, here, as an exercise, you can add your third submenu. So this is the name of your submenu, and uh, these are the uh, menu items of that submenu. And uh, so this is what you see: my submenu. Okay. So moving forward. Okay, so from exercise four, uh, we are going to use XML uh, menu resource file rather than creating menus in code. Okay, so when you run this application, uh, again it's pretty you know simple. Uh, the options menu, so click menu, and uh, then you're going to see these two menu items. Okay, so this is what we have seen in uh, the presentation. So if you click this one again we display very simple toast message so code is pretty much the same so the uh, as uh, I mean the code is something that you have seen in the presentation so in order to get the menu resource object we are going to use menu inflator class okay and uh, then you're going to call a static method of that menu inflator, I'm sorry, the uh, the uh, the uh, um, uh, the um, instance method, inflate method, uh, inflate instance method of this object, menu inflator object, providing uh, the um, menu resource, and then you can use those ID uh, as uh, an ID values when you call get item ID. So. It's relatively straightforward. Okay, so this is XML uh, menu resource file. Okay, so menu element, it has a two items. And uh, this is an ID. And the title is from a string resource file. Okay. All right, moving forward. So simple modification we are just adding another one so you're going to add uh, these two lines okay so this is an example that you are hard coding a string which is not a good practice but is allowed and uh, you can see shout loud uh, the menu item is being shown here okay exercise 5 is now we are also displaying icon so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you are just adding another line for your menu item in your XML file. So here we have icons with uh, the menu text, menu label. Okay. So the code is pretty much the same, except now in your menu XML resource file, you are adding uh, a drawable uh, resource file. Uh, using Android colon icon attribute for each item. Ok, 
okay so relatively straightforward and uh, these icons are in the form of PNG file and they are on the drawable uh, directories now on the res you have seen you see actually several uh, the uh, drawable directories one is for high resolution uh, L is low resolution and M is medium resolution okay so you might in fact provide uh, different resolution depending on the device meaning if you want to support uh, different devices with different resolutions uh, you can specify you can actually have those with a different uh, resolution G PNG file and we'll talk about those things later on when we cover resources okay so question uh, from Kishan can I keep high resolution images in the low resolution folder yes I mean there is no restrictions in terms of you know what is the right resolution uh, the uh, so it you know when the when the device can handle it that's fine if device cannot handle then you know the uh, uh, then that's the problem but from the platform uh, the perspective there is no uh, the I mean there are general guidelines Okay, so you know that that general guidelines is uh, recommended to be uh, followed. Okay, exercise six. Uh, here we are creating submenus. So uh, let's see. So when you click emotions, we have the submenus: happy, neutral, and sad. Again, it's just a matter of a nested menu so this is simpler than uh, the code okay so this is basically uh, we are having this second item of the outer menu as a sub menu items okay exercise seven so grouping yeah I haven't talked about the concept of groups in the presentation but a group is a collection of menu items that share a certain uh, traits for example uh, they can the as a group uh, the those items can be hidden or shown uh, through set group visible or set group enabled a set group checkable so uh, you are, you can call this method to control a group of items uh, so that you can make them all invisible invisible or visible or enabled or disabled and things like that okay so let's see uh, the uh, the application so when you run this application you're going to see in this case six menus okay so here uh, later on you are going to see uh, XML resource file in which these two refresh and bookmark menu item belongs to browser visibility group and these two, the bottom two, reply and forward items belong to email visibility group. Okay, so these three, I mean these two belong to this and these two belong to this. Okay, so here when you click browser visibility, uh, what happens is that uh, the, you are saying that I want all uh, menu items that belong to this group to be invisible so these two refresh and bookmark will be invisible so that is what you're going to see like this so those two items are now invisible okay now if you click it again then it will set those groups visibility again visible so you're going to see them again oh so in this case we are going to try this one first so if you click this one again it will make items in that belong to this group to be invisible okay so these two will be gone like this okay now if you click one of this and then it will set the visibility reverse so it will make it visible so if I click this one again you are going to see those two uh, items that belong to this group to appear again okay so that's how grouping works so let's see the code so again we get the uh, uh, XML resource uh, through inflate method okay now we can call 
we can call the uh, the uh, so basically here we have two group ID so browser visibility menu item is a group that's a one group and this is a second group okay so when of those two uh, group uh, menu items are selected uh, what we are doing here is that we are switching uh, should show browser value flag either one or nothing. I mean, it will just get re, you know the uh, the uh, reversed. Okay, and then we are basically setting the value either visible or invisible by calling set group visible. Okay, same thing with this. Okay, all right. So let's see the code. I mean the uh, resource file. So here we have uh, the uh, uh, we have menu, okay, and uh, we have uh, group, okay, and these two groups has two items. Okay, and same thing with this. So when this item is selected, okay, we are controlling this group. Okay, so that's the reason we are actually seeing six items: this first one, second, third, and six. But the logic we have in this particular example is when this particular item is selected, we are controlling this group. In this case, we are making them either visible or invisible. Okay. All right, so moving forward, exercise eight, checkable. So when you run the application, so uh, either you can set either none, none of them are checkable, all of them are checkable, or a single one is going to be checkable. Okay, so this is a case that none of them are checkable, so you don't see anything. If you go back and uh, if you select single, then one of them can be selected. Okay. Okay, so that is pretty much uh, it. And here uh, we are basically uh, have a none item, and then we have a sub menu. Okay, and then we have checkable behavior none or checkable behavior all checkable behavior single okay and uh, when you have one of the items actually set to true that's what gets set as a default or if you're not using grouping you can actually have checkable true for each of those items and in this case I'm actually setting these two both of them actually as checked okay exercise 9 is shortcuts so shortcut is pretty straightforward. So here, in order to select this particular menu item, all you have to do is press A. So this is B and this is C. So these are the shortcuts. Okay. Uh, it's just showing you. Suppose if you want to do uh, the. Uh, so in this case, when you go. G it's gonna go over here okay so it's basically showing you how to set your language and keyboard so let's see the code yeah so it's relatively straightforward uh, in addition to visible an ID and a title and icon you can have alphabetic shortcut and then you can provide the value okay okay so that is a shortcut exercise 10 is order yeah so uh, the uh, uh, so you can actually have order in category for each item. Okay. So this one will be the first one that gets uh, displayed. 
this one gets displayed a second this is third oh this one should, should be the first okay okay so now this is actually ordering inside a single menu now you can have uh, different categories and in each category uh, you know the categories could uh, no voice uh, you're having some issues with my voice can people hear me all right okay good all right a question from dimple can you provide training on Android localization so you are going to actually cover localization in a topic of uh, resources Okay, so that's one of the topics that you, we are going to cover. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, so looks like a, someone, yes, a couple of you still have some, some issues with my voice. Um, is that, things are okay now? Can you hear me all right? Okay, so another question is, uh, can you mix inflating menu from resource and adding items from Java code for the same menu? Yes. All right, moving forward. So exercise 11 is sort of extension of exercise 10. So here you can have two different categories. So here we have a first set of category. So the first category is most often, let's say, you know, the uh, um, buttons. And uh, this second category is less often uh, pressed keys, something like that. So here we have this first group. And then we have this second group okay and then each of numbers in each category is actually representing the order inside this category okay so this one display first and this one display second and inside uh, this category number will be used uh, in terms of which one gets display first Okay, exercise 12, uh, you, uh, can, you can make a visible or invisible by in XML by using XML flags. So here, visible. So, you know, you can just use Android uh, colon visible first. Uh, and you can set it on the group as well. So these are the things you actually set it initially in XML file and then you can control these things later on in your Java code. Okay. Question from Kathleen, can you create your own XML files? Uh, the, I'm not sure I understand what you meant by creating your own XML files. I mean of course we are all creating these XML files uh, ourselves. I'm not sure whether that's what you're asking. That if send me uh, the uh, clarification. Yeah, so XML files are, you know, these XML files are something that you have to create. Okay, all right. Uh, disabled is pretty much the same. Uh, it's disabled, meaning even though it's being shown, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not, let's say, uh, pressable. So these are, these three buttons are enabled, but these two, uh, the items are disabled, meaning you cannot click it, you cannot select it. All right. Yeah, so basically you are using enabled, uh, false, or true. Again, you can change this value from your programming code. Okay. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. So I think there are a few questions that I have not answered. So let me uh, make sure I 